Unfortunately, pretty much everyone will experience feelings like grief, loss, or heartbreak at some point in their life. It's just part of the human experience. And although those emotions might be difficult, it doesn't mean we can't heal from them. So let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Jills and I help women step into their power and become their best selves. So if that's something you wanna do, you should absolutely subscribe and stick around. So today let's talk about the tougher subject of grief, loss, and heartbreak. So this video is for you if you've ever lost a loved one or if you're going through a rough breakup or even a friendship breakup, if you've ever lost a cherished pet, all of these things apply here because even though there are different ways that we can experience the feeling of loss, that underlying emotion is all still the same, just with maybe varying intensity. And so the way that we heal is usually pretty similar too. And many of you probably already know this, or at least if you consistently watch my channel, you might know this, but I lost my mom seven and a half years ago. And obviously there was a lot of grief in that process. And so these are things that I wish I could have told my younger self. But even if you're here, not because you physically lost someone close to you, but a breakup has created that loss, or someone you love is just no longer longer a part of your life for whatever reason, all of these tips still apply. So I hope you get some value from this video and that it provides some sort of peace and healing for you. So let's get into it. So I think as a society, there's this notion that like, okay, something heavy and traumatic happens and then you're just expected to go back to your normal self like nothing ever happened, not even shed a tear the very next day. And that is just not reality. You have to allow yourself time to fully feel your feelings and express them. And you have to give your yourself permission to feel those tough emotions. Because suppressing our emotions, especially when they're more intense and heavy, it doesn't do us any good. Because when we don't express those emotions and let them out, that energy has nowhere to go and it just stays buried deep in our body. And over the long term, this actually hurts so, so much worse. And not to mention a lot of the ways that we suppress our emotions is by things like binging on food, drinking alcohol, retail therapy, being a workaholic, all things that are not very good for us. And I know it's not easy because the pain can be intense sometimes, but the only way out is through. You will never fully reach that other side until you can sit with your emotions fully and completely and honor them. Because suppressing emotions and trying to distract yourself from them, all it does is just stuff it down deeper into your body for them to come up later and for them to dictate the way you live your life at a subconscious level. And that's usually not a good thing. Acknowledging your feelings and bringing light to them and expressing them is a crucial part of the healing process. Because remember, again, the only way out is through. And the pain that you so badly don't want to feel is unavoidable, but be brave enough to feel them and don't judge yourself for what comes through when you do that. So although one of the most important things when it comes to healing is feeling your feelings and giving yourself grace and time through that process, there is something very valuable about stability and creating stability in your life and basically not letting yourself dig too deep into a hole that you can't ever escape from. All I mean to say here is that there is a time and a place for cuddling up in bed, closing all the blinds and feeling all the feels. And there is also a time and a place for forcing yourself to go to that yoga class because you know that it'll make you feel good and you know that it'll help move that energy throughout your body. There's a time and a place for staying home and honoring that need for alone time. And there's also a time and a place for getting dressed up, getting yourself out of the house and going out to dinner with friends because you know you still need that connection. And of course, nobody can tell you what you need, only you can do that. But I've found, at least with my own healing, that you have to balance feeling your feelings and taking things a little bit slower with creating stability in your life and getting back to the things that you love and getting back to life. It is more than okay to slow down and go inward after a big loss in your life. And in fact, I highly recommend you do that, but that doesn't mean you have to stay there forever. Sometimes you have to give yourself what you need not what you want. Now, I wanna make an important point and share a perspective or a viewpoint that really helped me. Those heavy emotions like grief, depending on what you're dealing with, they may not ever go away completely, but emotions like grief, 
can coexist with emotions like joy, happiness, love, and fun. You can still be grieving, but also still have an awesome time with your friends. You can be grieving, but still feel so much love and gratitude for all the people that are in your life. You can be so excited that your wedding is coming up and you're marrying the love of your life, but also be sad about the fact that your dad is not there to walk you down the aisle. You can be super excited about your new date, but still feel a sense of grief about the old relationship you lost. You can feel grief for losing someone special in your life while also feeling happy and grateful for the time that you two did have together. You don't have to feel guilt for being able to feel love, joy, happiness, fun, emotions like that, even during the grieving process. They can coexist together and they likely will coexist together for a long time. And so with that said, when you are healing from grief, loss, and heartbreak, you have to prioritize the little joys in your life. That walk at your favorite park, that special latte that you love at the corner coffee shop, your favorite dress, time with your best friend, whatever it is, find and creating joy in your life is so valuable during that healing process, even when it's still coexisting with grief. Now, when you're going through a tough time, connection is everything. We are social beings at the end of the day, and that support will help us feel so much better. And the truth is, is that most people wanna help you. Most people want to support you, but not everyone knows how to do that. And that's why I think it's super helpful to be really clear about how people can help you. Don't be afraid to speak up to people you really trust. So for you, that might mean just spending time with someone you love or allowing you to vent to them or cooking with them or whatever it is. And I know sometimes that when you're feeling down, asking for what you specifically want is really annoying, like we just want it to magically happen, but that's usually just not how it works. Sometimes we have to be clear about what this means to us so that we can get it. For example, maybe it's the anniversary of someone you lost coming up. You might need to vocalize to your partner or your best friend or whoever that that is a really heavy day for you and you might need a little bit of extra love and support. Or you'd really love it if on that day you guys took a long walk at your favorite place. Or you'd really love it if they just acknowledged it and asked how you were doing and checked in on you. Maybe they are intentionally not bringing it up because they don't want to upset you. The point is, is that people naturally show their care and love in different ways, but it might not be in the way that you need. And so you have to communicate. Again, maybe your husband is trying to show you his love by cooking a good meal, cleaning all the dishes, putting all the kids to bed without you needing to help and giving you your space when really all you want is good quality time together. But he's not gonna know that unless you communicate it. When we're dealing with loss, whatever kind of loss it may be, we need people we love around us. We don't need to heal alone. And it's usually much smoother of a process when we can do this with the support of others. And it's not a bad thing to vocalize what you really need. Now, as cheesy as it sounds, it's also helpful to remember that grief can only come from the loss of something you love. Grief can only truly exist because happiness and love is able to exist. So although grief is a hard emotion to work through and feel, it only exists because you were once able to feel something with so much love. It's a beautiful reminder of the love and joy you had, not in a way that, oh, all of this is taken from me, more in a sense of, wow, how cool was it to experience that love? even if it was shorter than expected. Now, I don't think this perspective is easy to have right away, like right after you experience a big loss in your life. But when things start to settle down, keep this thought in your heart. And eventually when you start to move through that healing process, you will likely still feel grief for what you lost, but you'll also be able to experience gratitude for what you had. And this keeps your heart open. So you'll be able to more easily experience things like love and happiness in the future. And the last little tip when it comes to healing from grief, whether it's the loss of a loved one or you had a really difficult breakup or whatever, is to reflect on any learning lessons that may have come up through that experience. So again, I don't recommend doing this right away, not until you've really felt all those feels and let yourself grieve and are starting to feel a little bit better. But with every experience in life, there there is always something valuable that we can learn from it. There is always something that we can take away from it. So when I lost my mom, I had many, many learning lessons from that. But one that is a super common one was it was a reminder of how important relationships are to me and how I should spend more time with the people I love and not let stupid arguments get in the way 
of our relationship because you don't have forever. And this takeaway has positively impacted my life and how I show up for relationships today. Or maybe you're dealing with a breakup that was really hard on you. What did that relationship teach you? What did it teach you about yourself, about relationships, about love, about sacrifice, about forgiveness? There's so much we can learn from these tougher moments. Don't ignore the wisdom that you gain from these moments when moving forward in your life. If you have any other pieces of advice for anyone listening, please share them in the comments below. If there was something that was really important in your healing journey or something that you wish you would have known during those tougher moments, I'm sure that there is a lot of people that could benefit from them. So please share. I hope you like this video. I hope you got some sort of value from it. And if you did, be sure to give it a like and share it with a friend who you think might possibly benefit from it. And also go check out this other video of mine right here because I think that you will really like it. So thank you so much for watching. I am sending you lots and lots of love. Bye.